Good evening, ladies and gents. Today I'm doing The Room is Bigger. It's an interesting discussion, and uh, some people may know that I have a, uh, a satirical weblog that I've kept up for quite a while called Mosquito Cannon. You can actually see it at mosquitocannon.com, and you can read some of the articles. It's a horribly done website. It's terrible, but the articles are fairly funny. Um, and I've enjoyed making them. But in one of them, of those articles, where I discuss the things that are destroying the world, part two, actually, I discuss how the room is bigger. <clears throat> and I'm really going to be basing this off of that work. So what do I mean by the room is bigger? So is that supposed to be some sort of witty metaphor? Well, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> what I mean is this. Let's say you and a buddy are at lunch. You pick a table in the corner and you start talking about some of the serious issues that are pressing our world today. Like the new pumpkin spice charcoal they just came out with uh, at the store today. So this is right after being the inevitable launch of pumpkin spice tires for your car. So pumpkin spice everything. So you joke and you laugh and you carry on about pumpkin spice uh, because uh, pumpkin spice people, sorry, and how they must be out of their minds. All in all, you're just having fun conversation and even though your, your spouse even may be a pumpkin spice fanatic, it's just a vent. You got out of your system, and now you can go home, and you can respect them again, uh, and just not faulting them for, you know, the pumpkin spice blanket that they bought a few weeks ago. No big issue. No complaints. No hurt feelings. Everybody just feels better. But instead of that happening, imagine it's a different world where everything is recorded. You know, maybe the government has cameras in everyone's eyes by now. You know, like that's not far off. And your conversation goes public. In fact, let's say it happens in real time, like everyone in the world is in the room with you, listening to you, and you say all of your derogatory things about pumpkin spice people publicly for everyone in the world to see and hear. Well, in a pool of hundreds of millions of internet users, there will be plenty of people who are offended by what you said, angered, hurt, or threatened even. If you said that about pumpkin spice people, what else would you be willing to do to them? You have pumpkin spice phobia, don't you? You'll never understand pumpkin spice people at all because you aren't one of them. So stop trying and put aside your prejudice. So very quickly you are disliked and you are offend offended yourself by that. Some of these people are accusing you of some pretty terrible things that flat out aren't true. And after all, your spouse is a pumpkin spice fanatic. You have pumpkin spice fanatic friends. You are certainly not a pumpkin spice phobe. You respond defensively, of course. Pumpkin spice people are ridiculous. This thing has gone too far. Pumpkin spice tattoos are about as far as you should go. But that's it, darn it. Pumpkin spice is everywhere. And of course, you're not taking it extremely serious at this point because you're not taking their argument extremely serious because you're still in your little closet of a mind just thinking as if you're talking to your friend. You don't have any idea that everyone else is in the room. And you've got every right to say what you did and no one else was there anyway. So why should they care? How do they really know what you meant anyway? You know? So some people read into your defensiveness and further condemn you. You get threats. People say they don't even know if you're a real human being and insult your family or appearance or taking low blows. Others rush to your defense. Feeling threatened by the escalating hate piled on you as a non-pumpkin spice of themselves, they polarize the issue and take their own nasty jabs. Some of them seem to genuinely hate pumpkin spicers through how they talk and start using slurs, like foodie slurs or something. This escalates the situation even further, and some of the pumpkin spicers come right back with their own slurs and horrendous remarks. But at this point, you just want it all to go away. And you just apologize. So, some thank you for it, but others see it as a sign of weakness or farce and slam you even harder. A lot see it as you admitting you are wrong, making your genuine defendants feel betrayed. Many turn on you and dislike you. Your more radical defenders slam the pumpkin spicer even harder, and because you know it, it uh, because you know it seems out of control. You're miserable. You just want it to go away. You'll take sensitivity training if you have to to just keep this from getting out further. Uh, hopefully, you don't lose your job or have some psycho knock on your door with a handgun. I know what you're thinking. Why didn't he just keep his comments sensitive and not use a dangerous label, right? By and large, that wisdom is good. There are lots of labels that can and should be avoided to keep focusing conversations on better facts with more detail to avoid these situations. But in the end, is it really possible to keep from offending everyone 
In fact, this thing actually happens every day, and it's destroying the world in my mind. You see, the world isn't just you and your immediate relatives or friends anymore. It's everyone. A single word or incident can go anywhere now, and no one understands the context of what you said or did. And with people in California arguing with people in Georgia over what you said, they have little hope of understanding each other's comments or thoughts either, let alone coming to any particular solution that doesn't involve hurting the other group. And the idea, like, someone agree disagrees with me, they hate me, and they're out to get me, I have to strike first. That, that whole idea is, is <laughs> it's like the beginning of most any war historically, but that takes root, is what's going on. It's just this defensiveness, this anger just builds in people without context. So it all seems ridiculous. It happens, like I said, it happens every day, all day long. Racial issues, politi politics, bathroom laws, I mean, anything that's been in the news lately, BLM, it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever it is, it has become an out-of-control wheel of madness sucking people into its wake. Unfortunately, these discussions create a false perception that everyone hates each other or that pumpkin spicers are somehow irreconcilably different from the others. One is always hurting the other somehow, and in that us versus them mentality, issues are even created or fabricated just to make sure your side wins. People create their own perception and further it in, in order to help create their mindset and justify their mindset. Uh, in order to justify their own tribe, their own side, because they don't want to be wrong. And they won't think rationally about what the other side could think could get right. So some people may think that's ridiculous still, but that doesn't happen. Even though we see it every day, everywhere, all over the media, you still may think it's ridiculous. But I just want to point to like racial riots, you know, and, and, and think like the riots happening in the streets and the animosity developing around recent events in the U.S. I mean, before facts are even known or li the lines are already drawn and people already have an opinion. You know, there's fights over everything from obscure language to like, costumes. I mean, for, like the, the way back that Disney Moana costume that everyone pulled off. That's just that was a foreshadowing of what was to come that everyone got angry about a Moana costume because nobody could agree with it. Nobody could be happy with it. And now it just it's you can't address anything. It's just it's pointless. You know, you th think about Colin Kaepernick. You know, one guy slams Colin Kaepernick for not respecting the national anthem and the flag, okay? And someone else gets offended because that's his right, and how dare you offend that, or you be offended by that. Someone else is offended because they know people that died for that right, and the only reason they have it is their sacrifice. You must hate those sacrifices in order to have that position. Someone else is offended because people seem to hate everyone that doesn't come from this country, and you sound kind of like them. Uh, then we're offended because he was successful in that country and rewarded by people who love that country and make a hundredth of his income. So why is he complaining? <clears> then <throat> people are offended because that must mean he can't have an opinion. If you if you think that way, he can't have an opinion of his own if he makes a lot of money and they will just never understand what it's like to be like him. And on and on it goes and it doesn't change and <clears throat> you know each one barely understands the other. They're not even understand. They don't even get context of their points anymore. Nobody knows what, really what's being discussed anymore. And they barely understand each other. They get angry, they're angry, angrier and angrier at the implications of what the other said. All of a sudden, it's just us versus them with everybody. And all of a sudden, it's about everyone. It involves everyone, it's about everyone because they all get accused somehow. And it's not just about one person anymore, it's about everybody. Like like the French Revolution, you know, it's us versus, it's just kill them all, let God sort them out. You know, it's just on a smaller scale. or. Maybe not. Maybe it's a bigger scale. <laughs> so by the time you throw out vastly inadequate labels to accuse people like white, black, immigrant, American, etc., it becomes impossible to have an intelligent conversation where anything is accomplished. In fact, think of any national conversation that didn't include a racial label that didn't offend anyone. You can't because as soon as you say white people, Mexicans, I mean, whatever it is, it just doesn't matter. All right, Whatever attribute, characteristic, issue, or idea uh, you're addressing with that label, it will miss the mark and it will inevitably be wrong to someone somehow. So internet, news media, entertainment, every platform where people talk into the big room becomes a breeding ground for animosity and hatred. The only thing that will control that is just wisdom from experience and understanding on the part of literally just about everyone. And we don't know how long it will take for humanity to adjust as developing hive mind, but hopefully we don't kill each other first because <laughs> they, they kind of feel like they are. And, and just, 
And I'm going to say this, it takes a lot of maturity to sit back and realize, you know what, that person probably has a different context than what I think they do. But unfortunately, not everyone has that maturity. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people with power and a lot of people in positions of, of influence and authority that don't have that maturity. It seems like most of them, most people don't have that maturity. They're not ready for this. I mean, heck, our, our society is not ready for this. Our language base isn't ready for this. And just people to get in, in to get offended at every little thing. I mean, the, just common uses of the English language offend people. And I don't see, the, like I said, we're just not ready for this. And so this whole thing is just causing people to get so angry and causing bitterness and strife. And it's just, it's going to take a lot of development. Uh, that's one of the things destroying the world and it, it, all I can say is it comes down to experience and I don't even know what the best solution is you know there's a lot of weird solutions that are thrown out around there and you know do we need to change language and stuff like that I, I personally don't think that makes it any better you know it's like if you have something if you have dirty laundry or it, just, we're gonna say laundry in general some of it's clean some of it's dirty sitting in the room and you can't clean the room by just pretending it's not there you, you can't you might as well deal with it so just go ahead and open it up and deal with it you know everyone needs to be willing to deal with stuff and, and look into what people are thinking and saying and there's no point in taking somebody that you castigate and say you're on that side so you you can't exist anymore we can't have you anywhere in professional societal life i mean that's what does that do that us versus them mentality where you draw a line and say depending upon your label you're either valuable not valuable you're guilty not guilty but it's not a workable system it's not you have to have the maturity to come out of that and just be able to understand people you know Carl Jung had a really powerful thought and his thought was I don't know if I agree with everything Carl Jung said but his thought was is that when you're young, you can't differentiate between you and the universe around you and other people, other things. But as you grow and you older and you experience your limitations, you begin to see and define other things and other people. And so labels, big labels are something that younger people use in order to help formulate ideas of society. But the idea that Jung brought up was that as people get older, they put more detail onto things. And you no longer need to look at people according to these big labels. You don't need to talk about somebody as, you know, white, black, Asian, you know, whatever it is. In high school, we had all these terms, you know, like nerd and geek and goth and, you know, hips, you know hipsters now and stuff like that. I mean, you know, you have all these uh, labels that are thrown out there. And you don't, as you get older, you don't need those. You start learning what people actually are. You start seeing their building blocks. And I could, I could, oh my goodness, I could do a whole episode on just that. And I probably will because there's a lot to say there. And I've already written an article on it too. So, but suffice to say, the bigness of the room is part of what's, what is causing so much strife. And we all have to get accustomed to it and learn to deal with it and learn to mature with it.